So the Olympic qualification process was announced a couple months ago and I entirely missed it. I think I was busy uh, renovating and reopening a, a gym in Toronto called Joe Rockheads and uh, we were just really busy there. So I missed all of this, recently got caught up on it and it's made me want to think about who will be going to the Olympics. Uh, how does the system work? Who Who's at an advantage and who's at a disadvantage? Um, Obviously, we don't have a lot of the information quite yet. The qualification process hasn't started, but we can use past information like results from last year, um, previous uh, combined rankings to try and piece together who would have made it to the Olympics uh, if it was this year and it used last year's information. Um, so let's just take a walk through this. It's kind of fun, uh, fun thing to experiment with. We'll start with the actual document itself. So this is the qualification system. You can find this at the IFSC website. Uh, or I'll put a link uh, in the description box below. Uh, 20 men and 20 women will be competing in sport climbing. 18 of those spots will be through qualification events, and then the host country reserves a spot for their own athletes, and the Tripartite Commission, which I'll talk about later, uh, reserves one spot uh, for whomever uh, they choose. Important to note that each NOC, which basically means each country, can send a maximum of two athletes per gender. So as I'm sure if you follow climbing, you're aware that Japan has been on a tear lately and they have many, many athletes in the top 10 of the world rankings. So unfortunately, they'll be limited to two male athletes and two female athletes, uh, even if they have more than that uh, technically uh, fulfilling the requirements to qualify. Every country is capped at two per gender. And that is going to come into play in a couple instances as we walk through this. I'm going to skip over most of the athlete eligibility stuff, mostly because I don't know these situations. Um, I'm going to assume that all the athletes we look through, uh, you know, follow the rules and meet the criteria and are properly licensed. So we'll kind of ignore that and we'll get to the actual pathway itself. So a quick run over the first opportunity to qualify for the 2020 Olympics will be at the Combined World Championship in August uh, in Hachioji. Uh, and that's going to be the top seven athletes from that world championship in each gender. Uh, something to note is that starting with the new, new IFSC rulebook that was just recently published, uh, whenever you are um, doing a combined event, it's no longer six athletes that go to the combined finals. It's eight athletes that will go to the combined finals. So previously, uh, there were only six. Now it's eight. So that means in order to get in these top seven, you do have to make it into finals and then compete well enough in finals that you're not the eighth place uh, athlete ideally. The second opportunity to qualify is the new Olympic qualifying event held in Toulouse, uh, and that'll be later in the year. And then there will be uh, the Continental Championships, uh, which will run for each continent to choose at least one representative from each continent to kind of spread things out geographically. And then, of course, the host country place and the Tripartite Commission. Anyway, let's start taking a look at who may actually earn some of these spots. And we'll just go off of results from last year. So first of all, the combined world championships, we can use the data from the 2018 world championships. So if we pull this up, we are gonna figure out who our first climbers are. We'll start with the men. These were the finalists for the men, Jakob Schubert, Adam Andra, Jan Hoyer, Kai Harada, Tomo Narasaki, and Kokoro Fuji. All of these spaces are eligible to go on to the Olympics, except that three of these athletes, Kai, Tomoa, and Kokoro, are all from Japan. So only two of them, a maximum of two from Japan, can compete. So unfortunately, Kokoro, as the lowest uh, ranked climber out of this event, he cannot go to the Olympics based, uh, it, at least within this scenario. Now again, this is only six climbers and we need seven and we've actually disqualified one of them because of too many people in his, uh, from his country. So we're gonna go to the full results. So our top six, and again, we're taking out Kokoro. So we need two more. So the next in line, number seven is Mikhail Mawam from France, so he's in. And then we would go to Meichi Narasaki, but again, he's Japanese, we can't take him. So we're gonna move down to Sasha Lehman. And if we go to the women's results, your top six actually really clean. No need to knock anybody out. Yanya, Sol, Jessica Pills, Akio, Miho, and Petra. And then to add the seventh, we're going to go to the full results. And we can see our number seventh is Stasha Geo. Already Japan has locked down their two, uh, two spots. So no further Japanese athletes can make it through. But at least we haven't kicked anybody yet. So let's start taking a look at who 
these athletes will be. And here are those top seven that we were just talking about. So we're starting to figure this out. Now our next qualifying event is Toulouse. This one's interesting. The 20 highest ranked athletes per gender who have not yet qualified through the IFSC combined championships, uh, and again, ranked through the overall World Cup, uh, they'll be selected to attend this event. So in order to get to this event, you have to be in the top 20 overall World Cup ranking. Um, what's unique about this is that there are a lot of athletes, I'm just gonna come back to me for a second. There are a lot of athletes that go to the World Championships and actually do really well at the World Championships but the combined uh, world ranking requires results from at least two events in each discipline. So two, uh, two bouldering events, two lead events, and two speed events. So some of the people that did really, really well at the world championships didn't compete in enough world cups to actually earn a world ranking. So to get to this event, you can't just have a good uh, world championship event. You actually have to take the time and spend the money to get out to these World Cups uh, in order to be invited to this event. So if you don't make that top seven at the world championship, you have to hope you actually bothered to attend those things in order to qualify. So again, we're inviting the top 20 uh, aside from those already qualified. So we're going to skip over a couple of the athletes like Jan Hoyer and, uh, and uh, Tomoa. They're already in their spot, so we're going to uh, move past them. And then from those top 20, we're going to have them compete in a combined format, and we're going to be left over with the top six. So I went through the rankings from last season, and we can see uh, what those looked like. So here's the men's overall World Cup ranking, and I went through this and removed the people that have already qualified. Uh, and took those 20 and did the same thing for the women, took the, took the uh, top 20 women in the world ranking. And then because the world ranking doesn't really show you um, how well they do in an individual uh, combined event, it just shows you for the most part how well they competed at uh, separate discipline uh, specific events. I thought it would be fair to take that top 20 and then use that uh, to compare against the world championship results. So we went back to the world championship results and I took the top six that had actually been in the top 20 of the world championship. Sorry if that's super confusing. But anyway, what it left us with are these six athletes in each gender. So for the men, we get Alex Migos, Yerne Kruder, Marcelo Bombardi, Martian Jenski, Loic Timmermans, and Yufei Pan. And for the women, we add on Jane Kim, Alana Yip from Canada. Finally, we got one. Uh, Anna Brojic, Mia Krempel, Claire Burfind, and Yulia Pantadeva. So those are the first 13 spots per gender of who could be going to uh, the Olympics. And again, some of these names in that top 20, there were some people from Japan and for the women, uh, some people, or sorry, for the men also, some people from Germany that missed out on one of these spots just because uh, there are already, all of the German and uh, Japanese spots are already taken. Uh, so it's, it is uh, certainly going to be a bit of a bummer for some climbers from certain countries who are limited by that factor, even though they're excellent and uh, top tier climbers. Our next events uh, are the Continental Championships. Um, and interestingly, only two of the um, Continental organizations had combined championships last year, and that turned out to be the Americas and Asia. So I pulled those results. So for America, or for the Americas, um, first place was Danny Valencia. So he earns his spot in the men's side. And for the women, Kyra Condi from the United States. She earns a spot on her side, so we'll add them in. And then from the Asian event, if we start for the men, we have to cancel out a lot of these guys. Meiichi and Ray already gone because there's already uh, Japanese climbers um, in this field. <laughs> Uh, Yufei Pan, we just brought him in uh, through the um, Toulouse qualifier. Kokoro, we got to take him out. Uh, and then we're left with uh, Cheng Chi Shoji Chan from Hong Kong. And for the women, again, skipping over a few names, we're actually left with uh, El Naz Rakabi from Iran. So kind of underrepresented area so far. And we can add those guys into... Uh, into this field. Um, kind of interesting, if you get a chance, take a look at the men's results again, and uh, take a look at the, um, specifically, uh, Chin Chi's uh, bouldering event at, at this competition. 
um, it was kind of an interesting situation. If you ever uh, if you ever look at the results for that whole field, it kind of food for thought. Uh, anyway, for the other continents, for Africa and Europe and Oceania, we need to find their results. And I just figured the best way to pull the top athletes would just be to see who performed at the World Cup. Yeah, here we go. So for the men, uh, the first continent we got to deal with is Europe, and we're going to pull out Alexei Rubtsov. And for the women, sorry, I'm going to skip back to this. Here we go. So from Europe, these were your uh, top remaining athletes that weren't already uh, qualified and still had spots left from their country. Uh, for Oceania, we had to scroll down pretty far to find these guys, but George Sanders from New Zealand and Oceania McKenzie from Australia. And then from Africa, we managed to find one climber that competed from Africa uh, at the World Championship, Cowan Curtis from South Africa. There were no women from uh, Africa competing at the 2018 World Championships. So there will for sure be a female African athlete at the Olympics. They are going to have that qualifying event uh, in Johannesburg. Uh, but I don't know who it is. I'm not going to guess. Uh, they just didn't have an official sanctioned combined event last year. So I couldn't tell you what's going on. Um, Africa is obviously fairly underdeveloped in climbing, except for South Africa. They're the only fully fledged member of uh, of uh, of that like um oh, what do they call it the uh like kind of the continental councils technically africa doesn't even have like a full-on continental council just yet uh, so they're working on that there will be an event there will be a female uh, african climber so anyway we've now gone through the seven from the world championship the six from the toulouse event and then the americas asia europe um oceania and africa and now we have those two spots left for each gender and this is where we look at the host country places and the tripartite commission. So first of all, the host country place is kind of there to guarantee that the host country gets a representative for their citizens to cheer for and to kind of uh, thank them for like hosting an event, I guess. It's just to make sure that the host country is represented in this sport. Japan was already super well represented uh, in just the very first qualification pathway, so they don't need this anymore. And there is uh, a system for reallocating unused places for the host country places, unused host country places will be reallocated to the next highest placed athlete not yet qualified in the combined world championships. So we're going to go back to the world championship results. And the next highest uh, um, unqualified athletes are John Wan Chan and Margot Hayes. So you start to see some star power that, you know, didn't qualify in those earlier categories. Although, again, we just kind of made up this system with the best info we had. And then the last qualification stream is through the Tripartite Commission. Uh, the Tripartite Commission is made up of three parties. That's kind of what the word means. Uh, and those parts are the International Olympic Committee, the IFSC, and then the National Olympic Committee. So uh, each country involved in the sport. And the idea with this committee or with this commission is to uh, choose an athlete to represent a, an area that's underrepresented. Um, and that criteria seems to be somewhat vague. There may be an objective system for it, but it's not easily, uh, like it's not, it's pretty hard to like find any details and uh, I haven't found any myself. It may be some like legitimate journalists will dig into that and see what's up. Um, but when I look at these fields so far, when you look at the men on the left and the women on the right, one thing you notice about the men's side is no representation from North America. And maybe it's just because I'm Canadian, but I feel like a uh, Sean McCall has been a, a dominant athlete for uh, the last kind of like half decade uh, on the world stage. And he would be a great uh, person to nominate for one of these tripartite spaces. Uh, he is an ambassador for the sport. He's got a certain amount of fame that goes beyond his climbing fame, having done that TV work. And he's somebody that's not just appreciated in North America, but also Europe because he lived there. And he's just a really likable figure in the sport. So I feel like he would be an excellent candidate for this kind of thing. 
or maybe they go to a part of the world with political or financial considerations that makes it harder for their athletes to get to this kind of level or make it through the somewhat expensive or complicated qualification process. So I really don't know who they're going to choose. I'm going to leave that one blank. My vote for the men's side, at least, would be for somebody like Sean McCall. And maybe on the women's side, where there are no Chinese athletes represented, there's no Indian athletes on either side, maybe those would be good areas to uh, to include somebody, especially considering how huge um, those regions are and how important that might be for viewership. Uh, so that is the pathway uh, for the Olympics coming up. The qualification events start uh, at the end of this summer with the uh, World Championship. So it's really just a few months away. And if you consider the World Cups as you know being part of creating your world ranking, which will be important for the Toulouse event, <coughs> you could say that the path to the Olympics is actually starting up in just a couple months. So if you're a fan and you're trying to figure out who's going to make it to the Olympics, I hope you have a better understanding of how climbers will get there and the kind of struggles that different climbers from different areas might face. Uh, we really fudged these numbers and kind of just made it up based on intuition and best guesses and uh, obviously not not uh, a year that these athletes were trying to uh, qualify for the Olympics. So things will really change for uh, for 2019. But it's a, a neat way to think about it and just something new and seeing, you know, it's great that a country like Japan that's been support so supportive of climbing gets to host this first round. Uh, but they're going to have a lot of all-star athletes that are just going to miss it. And that might be really hard for a lot of them. Hopefully we'll see them with an expanded field in 2024. Anyway, if you like this stuff and you want to follow more nerdy climbing things, uh, subscribe to the channel, visit plasticweekly.com, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.